not meant to be a boundary. It's a way of communicating, and it's a way of helping us focus in order to dig down, like the power of science we introduced earlier. Uh, so we look at tacit knowledge in terms of embodied, effective, intuitive, and spiritual, so that over here in body, uh, these are experienced in the bodily material form. If I'm on a line, I learn how to do something. This is the classical ride of bike example of tacit knowledge, but that's embodied tacit knowledge. It's stored within the body. Uh, it can be kinesthetic or sensory. Um, so either way, it can be actually, um, by the way, uh, we store things all over our body, including emotions. Uh, any of you interested in that? Molecules of emotions by Candace uh, Hurt. Um, we actually have discovered now from neuroscience that emotions are stored all over the body. Uh, isn't that amazing? Uh, so uh, these are learned by mimicry and behavioral skill training. Okay. Uh, the why uh, can be evasive. Um, so effective knowledge has to do with the feelings. It's generally attached to other types of aspects of knowledge. Uh, the intuitive is a sense of knowing coming from within. We've separated out the intuitive from the spiritual here um, because we believe that uh, this is knowing that maybe without explanation, outside or expectation of past experience, uh, but at the same time we believe that the unconscious is continuously working. Uh, we have a lot of evidence to that and putting things together and taking in all this stuff that we are not consciously aware of. So there's all sorts of stuff that's stirring in there that's there for your future decisions. And uh, this is why relationship network management became so important to us in the US Navy, because the interactions we have and the conversations we have with others today are going to drive the decisions we make tomorrow. So make sure you're picking the right people and having the right conversations today if you want to have a successful future. Uh, that, that, that's a whole, anyone here not married? That, that's a whole new model for looking at who you pick and choose. Okay, um, and then we go to spiritual based on matters of the soul, and it represents the animating principles of human life. It is very much focused on the moral aspects, human nature, higher development of men, mental faculties, and very transcendent. Um, and this is where we have that change, that shift that happens moving knowledge to wisdom. And we could spend a whole day on, on this conversation. Um, higher guidance with unknown origin, we say. Uh, but who knows, we, we continuously are looking for an answer to that. Um, Let's go to the... Uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions about that? I just kind of wanted to show a little bit about that. Um, this just gives an example of, of ways... Um, is this, uh, this information uh, in one of your articles? You write engaging tacit knowledge and I will send you all of this and put presentation and I'll send you the presentation as well as the paper on it. And, and I'll even send you another one that's moving to wisdom that's related to it, okay, uh, to consciousness. This, and if you put this model, this model is not in that paper. So ask me for this model. Uh, this is the four aspects model. Um, and this is a, a great model for um, looking at those. Uh, for instance, embodied at top, uh, it requires new pattern embedding for change to occur, so this has to do with change. Um, for example, uh, leadership behavior specific to the organization, physical motions on the assembly line, cultural norms such as preferred approach to interactions, appropriate language, subjects that can or can't be discussed. Um, so that could take the form of physical training and mental thinking. When you're looking at the intuitive, it's nurtured and developed through exposure, learning, and practice over time. And that's where communities, mentoring, uh, rotations, uh, the, the after-action learning, and knowledge sharing all come into play with the intuitive. With the effective, uh, it requires nurturing and development of emotional intelligence. Uh, the logic of the five whys is one example of that. We don't have a lot of time to go into this, but just to expose you to it. Um, and then the spiritual. It can be tapped by encouraging holistic uh, representation of the individual and respect for a higher purpose. Um, so we always try to bring that into our discussion. Uh, so just ask for this, and I'll be glad to share uh, more deep information about it. Are there any specific questions? Did that did that answer your question? A whole new set of laws that come into play here. Uh, our catalyst correlations unpredictability. Uh, so all of these are characteristics of the current landscape over here. Um, this emergent identity, remember the little exercise we did when you started and you closed your eyes for just a few seconds and thought about the future? Well, now you would be doing the same thing looking at your organization. And um, what are those new behaviors? What's that new language, the new way of thinking, the new structure, the new leadership, the new culture, all of those things that you want to be embedded in that future vision of yours, 
What does that look like? Um, and all of these here can be characterized in the same way. What are those things that might come into play here? Okay. So you have a, a little clearer way of thinking about where you really want to be and maybe what the connections are. Now, up here at top are mechanisms for understanding the differences here. You can have observation, analysis, reasoning, critical thinking, intuition, lucid dreaming. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you can tap into your unconscious. Uh, before you go to bed at night, you can actually put a question, anyone ever done this? You put a question in there and you wake up in the morning early and you're writing down the answer, okay? Everybody, try it. Your mind brain is the greatest resource that you have. If, if, you, if you leave with one thing, I think that, that maybe we've said that five or six times in different ways, that you have all of this wonderful capability down there that's available for you. So tap into it. So and don't expect it to work every time you try it. It takes a couple of years to develop the capacity. I've been doing it for about 15 years, and two out of three times I'll get an answer. You can increase your sensitivity to this. But it's very powerful. Uh, I use something called hemispheric synchronization. I just was reminded of that this morning. And that is the use of sound, where I put a 440 hertz in my left ear, a 444 hertz in my right ear. Uh, I tie that to a binaural beat. What happens is, um, for instance, the ocean. I entrain myself to something that's very comfortable, and very relaxing, <coughs> allow my body to relax, keep my mind awake, and I'm actually increase the connections between the two hemispheres of my brain, and I'm actually just able to slide into my unconscious while I'm and what is there is tremendous. You know, it's just tremendous. The resources that we each have, the things that are being brought in through all of our senses and connected together, our entire lives, every minute we are living, breathing, is phenomenal. So there's so much there for us to learn. Let me make a comment, too. We used to have been told that two things. One is that as you got older, your brain decayed, and you, your neurons died, and that was all there was to it. <clears throat> and the second one was, uh, yeah, what was it? I forgot. So, mine's mine, the mine, <laughs> uh, No, the patterns become more important. That's, that's service that's uh, anyway, that has been proven false completely. Your body continues to grow neurons, particularly if you use your brain. Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it is a statement, and that's absolutely true. You can minimize the loss of it, if you will, the loss of neurons, and you can grow new ones. So that your brain will adapt depending on what you want to do. And there's a new book that just came out uh, now. I'm trying to think of his name. Schwartz was the old one. There's a new book that's on the bookshelf right now if you go out. But this week it's, it's just come out. I've already read it. Um, great book that does some research on um, uh, not happiness. It's beyond happy. And flourishing. Well, the, the name of the book is Flourishing. Uh, excellent research based on the Army program of uh, flexibility and agility. Some wonderful stuff there, and they they continue to work with the army. I can't wait for the uh, the report next year. I'm sure it'll be another book as well, um, where the higher order energies, um, in fact, reshape and reform your brain. Remember, we talked earlier about we're able to change our genetics, and that in turn uh, changes our thoughts. So thoughts affect the structure of the brain. The structure of the brain affects the thoughts. So now we're beginning to discover that we can put ourselves in certain places and think and feel in different ways and can actually improve our thought processes through that, uh, our sense of well-being. What an amazing discovery. Uh, so take a look at some of the data that's coming out of the Army. Oh, we have a lot of Army people here. Huh? We also were taught that genetics was destiny, and whatever our genetics was, was our future. That is absolutely false. There's a field called epigenetics, been around about 15 years, making good progress, that has verified clearly that <coughs> genetics are important if they have diseases potentially, but they're important, but they're not sufficient because what turns the genes on and off are external fields around the cells itself, which we can influence by our nutrition, by our use of the neurons, etc. Et so it's the way it's the genes are just, expressed. Okay. Yes, so you have some choices here. The way the genes are expressed. Um, just as an aside, so many of you, I'm sure, have a trait that is really excellent at work and maybe not so good at home, or vice versa, okay? So so a lot of the same traits, it's how they're used. Again, knowledge is context-sensitive and situation-dependent. We'll see that again and again. So uh, dialogue, effort, we've done a little bit of that today, um, and some effortful reflection. We talked about that in terms of developing deep knowledge, effortful reflection. Uh, 
Uh, so these are mechanisms for understanding all of this stuff that's going on in the vest. And we can, in fact, influence the emergence of these new behaviors. Okay. We cannot control them, but we can influence them. And here are some of the ways that you can do that. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of these, so we're going to move to the next slide. Um, but you'll see there's ontology, boundary management, absorption, optimum complexity, simplification, sense of response. We talked about that earlier. Amplification, seedings, and uh, key success factors. If we go to that next slide, I think we have a few of these just to uh, give you an idea of how, in fact, you can start influencing that mess. That's interesting. Oh, before we get there, I didn't realize they had this model. Um, we work uh, extensively with the Singapore Armed Forces, um, and um, they took a look. They, we, we worked a lot with them. Um, and they wanted to come up with an easier way of maybe looking at the difference between an ordered space and an unordered space. So this is a model that um, they came out with. Um, we worked with them in, in this. Uh, so basically for an ordered space, up here you have you know, your computational inputs, your organizational inputs. And the computational is that information, the rules. And from the organizational inputs, the best practices, again, rules and procedures and such things. You have predetermined meetings. You have predetermined actions and pre-specified outcomes in a stable and predictable environment. And that's fine. That decision tree is wonderful. But in this unordered space, you still have uh, the data information rules coming from the computational inputs and the best practices, rules, procedures here. But now you have to construct meaning. Uh, that's why David keeps going back to saying knowledge is about constructing meaning. Uh, and you have to construct the actions as a result of that meaning. And down here, instead of pre-programmed and controlled, the human and machine intelligence deals with attention, motivation, commitment, creativity, innovation. All of these things have to come into play. Um, and finally, on the final environment, you're going to deal with performance outcomes, not pre-specified outcomes. And of course, as we've said again and again, it's a decision journey. There's not a single decision that can take you from point A to point B in that, that graph that we had just a moment ago. You can't move from here to here, but you're going to have to go along. Did we put the other? That's your next one. Oh, it's the next slide. values, 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 values. Um, the big thing now, uh, I, I'm reading more and more about ethics, leadership and ethics, 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 ethics. But uh, ethics don't count unless they're um, consistent with your values. An individual has to have values that are consistent with achieving those ethics, or they'll just do it when they're told and when they're not looking, they'll go back. You know, that's the same cultural kind of thing. Um, so within that values framework, your strategic direction, the direction, direction that you're heading, um, you define a purpose, and that purpose may change. If you go outside your values, you will fail. You will not succeed, uh, because a lot of other things will come into play. So within that framework of your values, you have a purpose that's defined and a direction you're heading, but it shifts and changes as you co involved with the environment, and so you continuously must be changing your, your direction, your strategy, your tactics, all heading in a general direction there to accomplish. In other words, build in capability of withstanding the uncertainty in what you think you're going to be doing. Because there is an uncertainty there because the external world will change. The KUKA will change. If this is a, a strategy that takes two or three years, for example, even a year perhaps. So be prepared to have what is commonly called pivot points during your development of the strategy, implementation of the strategy, excuse me, so that you can shift. So it's not one decision go do. It is one decision to get started and a whole sequence of decisions as you implement so you can do correction and modification as necessary. That's very important. It costs money. It takes time. But it will be much more successful. Even as an individual, you took the few seconds to envision yourself in the future. But maybe after this class, maybe after this uh, next couple of days here uh, in this event, uh, you have new ideas that come in. And all of a sudden, when you do your next visioning and you stop again next week and you spend that few seconds, you're going to envision yourself in a different place. 